if you didn't have paint or a paintbrush, could you make a mural? If you didn't have a camera or an actor, could you make a movie? And let's be honest, if you didn't have a guitar, could you rock? With artificial intelligence, more and more of these things are becoming possible without needing any of those physical tools. For example, I made the images on the screen just by typing a few ideas into a text box, and in a matter of seconds, AI did the rest. It's my view that AI is a new type of creative medium, an alternative that's not better or worse than a paintbrush or a guitar, just a new thing that you can learn, and something you can learn quite quickly. I've been an artificial intelligence researcher for the last 13 years. I've seen AI go from barely being able to recognize words written on a page to being able to talk to you in the personality of your favorite superhero. To show you the power of AI as a creative medium and to show you some of its weaknesses and room for improvement, we're going to make a video, a 30-second car commercial for a car that's never existed. We'll do it in the span of this talk, just using AI. To get started, let's think of the theme for the car commercial. I got some help from social media friends. We figured out the car should be made out of pineapple, <laughs> and the car should be filmed, see the air quotes, filmed, on Mars. The next step is to develop, develop our film script, and to do that, we'll use a tool that you might have used before, ChatGPT. ChatGPT was trained on large amounts of data from the internet and further trained on conversations with people like you and me. Its goal is to do whatever you want, like help you think of a tasty recipe or craft an excuse that will allow you to get out of a very boring meeting. <laughs> We're going to give ChatGPT a significantly harder problem, making a film script for our car commercial. It's pretty easy. We just type into the text box, we want a 30 to 60-second second car commercial, it should be a, a pineapple car on Mars, and it just sets to work generating this. It can't make the video for us yet, but it can describe it. It can say what should be the things on the screen, and what should be the narration or the voiceover. Now, it's made a script of 12 shots, it's a little bit longer than I'd hoped, and I have some other changes that I want to make, so I just tell it. Make it five shots. And make it so the pineapple was grown on Mars, it's a sustainable car for pioneers, and also the car can make smoothies. <laughs> and in the snap of your fingers, it just makes those changes much faster than I could do. We're going to continue using a couple other AI tools to flesh out this video, and then we'll watch the video. But I first want to answer a question that I get all the time. Forrest, what actually is an AI model? An AI model is something that takes data as input and produces answers. The input could be a question, and the answer could be whatever's the right answer. The input could be your internet browsing history, and the output could be products you might like to buy. Or the input could be an idea for a new picture, and the output could be that new picture. We can go in an AI tool, another one of those text boxes, type in an entire car that's made out of pineapple, and here is what we get. We can change it however we want. We can ask for a dune buggy that's made of pineapple. Or maybe we'd prefer to see the interior of the car that's made out of pineapple. There are so many possibilities. If you're new to this, you might be wondering, how is it possible that a computer program, even one based on the latest AI, could generate such detailed images out of thin air? Well, it turns out AI and imagery have been intertwined for a long time. On your phone in your pocket, you might have an app like this, Google's Magic Eraser. You can use your finger and select part of the image, and Magic Eraser will just remove it and replace it with a realistic background. Or perhaps you'd like to add things to your images, in which case you'd enjoy using TikTok. It's using computer vision AI to find the key points on the face, and it can put interesting computer graphics on top of the face, like noodles and eggs, I guess. So far, we've used AI to create our film script and make some images in the style of that script. But can we use AI to animate a film, or at least a little piece of a film? For that, 
I made another image. I've been using this tool called Midjourney. It's one of these type an idea in a text box, get an image things. I just picked it because it's an easy one to use. This one is a woman drinking pineapple juice in a car on Mars. And I want to make her actually drink the juice. So I went in a tool called Runway ML for video animation with AI. I gave it this image and I said, hey, a woman drinking juice. Can she drink the juice? No, not really. <laughs> she puts it down. You know, I tried many times. This is what I usually get. The problem is AI for animation hasn't mastered fine motor skills yet. But it can do more basic things, like, for example, move the camera or move somebody's head. It can also use AI animation to make someone speak. So another day, another woman, another pineapple car, and another planet. This time, I'm going to have her talk. I'll use a tool called Eleven Labs. It's kind of like Siri. You can type something in, and it will speak. And then I'll use DID to actually animate her face with AI. Let's see how that goes. On a planet unlike any other, visionaries seek the uncharted. Meet the ride designed for dreamers and explorers. And now let's put it all together. Let's take all these pieces of data that we've created, combine it using iMovie, and make a few more examples in the same style and see what the movie looks like. On a planet unlike any other, visionaries seek the uncharted. Meet the ride designed for dreamers and explorers. Step inside a cabin where innovation marries comfort. For those who lead the way in groundbreaking choices that are as sustainable as they are delicious. Blaze new trails, pioneer new frontiers, relish the journey. I think the audio aspects were pretty good. You know, I could almost think of them being as their adolescence or adulthood level of quality. We used audio AI to make the speech and also to make some background music. AI for imagery is OK, but it struggles to make a consistent pineapple car. You notice it looks different every time. The AI for generating the script with ChatGPT is like a precocious toddler, as you might have experienced. It knows a lot of stuff, but it gets confused and makes a lot of mistakes, but it's improving pretty fast. AI for animating movies is in its infancy. <laughs> to me, what's so exciting is it's been born. It didn't exist five years ago, and it's kind of like where ChatGPT was in the form of GPT-1 five years ago. So it's on this rapid improvement curve, and I think where that's going to land is that all of us in the palm of our hand have one more AI trick, which is to animate anything, potentially of any length. I've been thinking about what having this technology at our fingertips means for the future of society. And I've noticed a pattern. Technology democratizes every type of media. When we get new technology, it helps us to more easily express our thoughts and share them rapidly with the broader audience. I'd like to show you three examples, in case you're not already convinced. First example is telegraphs. 150 years ago, if I wanted to send you a text message, I'd go somewhere like this. It's a telegraph office in Scotland. I'd scribble on a piece of paper what I want to tell you. A trained Morse code typist would send it over the wire. Another typist would receive it. And someone would physically carry you the message written on paper. And if you want to text me back, we had to reverse the whole process. Today, I would just text you. I think most of us can agree this is better. It's certainly faster. Another example of technology democratizing media and reducing the need for gatekeepers is news. 50 years ago, if I wanted the latest news, I'd probably pick up a newspaper. This worked pretty well, but had some limitations. It would take on the order of 12 hours to go from an event happening in the world to you being able to read about it in the paper. And there were the environmental implications of producing and distributing and destroying all this paper. More and more people now get their news from the internet, ranging from news websites that carry on the tradition of newspapers to social media sites, where there are news people, but there's also everyone. Lots more voices that weren't at all necessarily plugged in to the newspapers and able to get their ideas out there. This is exactly the definition of technology democratizing media. And the final example I want to show is television. In the last 100 years, we've gone from broadcast TV to cable TV to now streaming TV is the most popular form of television 
here in the U.S. That was true as of last year, and still true now. But a year later, YouTube became the most popular form of streaming television, overtaking Netflix. This represents an unprecedented level of ability for all of us, with no special access to news gatekeepers, to get our ideas potentially in front of billions of people. Technology democratizes media, and I think AI is the next rung on this democratization ladder. But I'll be the first to admit these transitions can be messy. Those telegraph operators ultimately had to find new jobs. But let's think about the scale of that problem. At its peak, Western Union, the main provider of telegraph services in the U.S., had about 20,000 offices where you could send a text message, and people estimate around 100,000 people worked in those offices. 100,000 jobs. Today, billions of people rely on their smartphones every day to entertain themselves, but also to transact business and make a living. These are the kinds of shifts we see with newer technology democratizing our communication and our creativity. I'd like to share a few predictions for where I think things are headed next. Within five years, I think at least 10% of video views on YouTube will be on AI-generated videos. In Hollywood this year, we saw an unprecedented writer's strike. Of over 180 days, writers were worried about having their jobs taken away by AI. I think writers actually were worried about the wrong thing. With the AI that we're going to have in the near future, it'll actually be the writers who don't need Hollywood. Which is why I predict that within 10 years, a small team of 10 or fewer people, probably mostly writers, will use AI to make a movie that captivates our attention so much it wins an Academy Award, maybe even the top prize. Best picture. Within 15 years, I expect another seismic shift in what kinds of content we watch, with the help of AI. There will still be the traditional Hollywood movies with multi-million-dollar budgets and thousands of staff members. There will be these new breed of AI-assisted movie creation that's created by small groups who, the ones who win this award. But there will be AI home movies as well. I predict that families will sit down in the evening, think of something they want to watch, and type it into a text box, and instantaneously AI will make exactly the movie they want in the style they want. I think this will be especially fun for families who have children who are creative and curious, and have ideas for movies that grown-ups never thought to make. When I explain this future, some people are really excited. I'm one of them. But some people are actually really afraid. They ask, "Will AI be our new overlord? Will AI displace humanity?" I highly doubt it. As we've seen today, the future of AI depends a lot on how you decide to use it, what you tell it to do. So I recommend going out there and trying to do a few things with AI, and developing your own opinion of what can it do for you, and also. Where it's not good enough yet. I want you to take an AI tool and develop a media plan for your TikTok that will make you famous. I want you to start a little smaller. I want you to make a meal plan for the next week using AI. I want you to use AI to make a family portrait with family members who live far away who you don't get to see very often. I want you. To use AI to make a movie that's so good, it disrupts Hollywood.